My name is Maria Stamatopoulou. I'm a classical archaeologist and the school liaison officer for the classics faculty. For the next 10 minutes, we are going to looking at interviews. What are we looking for at an interview? How can you best prepare? How would it be like? It's something we're always asked in open, during open days and during outreach activities. So why do we do the interview? What we need to stress is that interview is only one part of the selection process. It's not the only one. Your personal statement, UCAS form, your grades, your written work, tests, referees, as well as the interview are all part of the process and they are all contextualized. Now, the point of the interview is for you to have a sense of how teaching will be done at Oxford and to decide whether this is something you would like to experience or not, because most of our teaching is done in small groups, either tutorials between a tutor like myself and one to maximum three students, or usually small classes, about four, five to ten people, where you would be discussing with one or more colleagues a topic, or sometimes the language classes, if you're learning Greek and Latin, either improving or learning them from scratch. So for us, the interviews are designed to help us look for your interest and commitment in the subject, your enthusiasm, your academic potential. And by that, we do not mean how well you have been taught. What we do mean is how you can think for yourself, how creative your thinking is, how you can think outside the boxes, how you can think independently, how you can solve problems. How would you go about looking at something unfamiliar or rather tricky? And whether your skills are suitable for the course you have chosen, because you might be extremely talented, but not necessarily for what you have applied for. So this is what we will try to establish or to judge if we can through the interview. So what happens when we invite you for an interview? Well, interviews are conducted by the colleges, not by the faculty. So you will be invited from by your college of choice, the first college. And for classics, they usually happen around the first or second week of December, usually midweek, mid to the end of the week. Initially, you will have interviews of your first college of choice. And typically, there are two interviews in that college by academic tutors like myself. In the next, after this, you could have more interviews in other colleges with other colleagues but there is nothing to read to this. It's part of the process. Now, for joint subjects, for example, if you want to do ancient on history or classical archaeology and ancient history or you know, joint schools like classics and modern languages, you would have probably interviews by tutors representing each subject. So typically, for example, when we have an interview in classical archaeology and ancient history, in my college, we do it together. So historians and archaeologists together assessing your ability in both and your interest in both aspects of your course. In other colleges, you could have one major, one interview being devoted to history, the other in archaeology. Similarly, for ancient modern history or another joint subject. There is nothing to be worried about that. That's the way we do things. And, you know, that's why we have more than one in the first college of choice. The key about the interviews are to be relaxed and to try to enjoy them yourselves and to try to be yourself. What we are looking for is to see your interest in the ancient world and to check whether what you've written in your personal statement is actually represented in the interview. We want to check your ability to study at Oxford in the way we teach and that does not mean whether you have been taught extremely well or you know not so intensively we want to see how flexible you are we want to see whether you are you have questions of your materials you know if you accept everything that you're being given or whether you will go about that hmm is this the case what could it be so to ask questions so what when you see something, why is this important? Why were people liking it? Where would it have been said? 
What was the impact of an object or a text? What motives were behind writing this text? Who would have been the audience? Does the audience affect the nature of writing and the argumentation? We also want to see how you present yourself, how you answer the, um, the, the questions, how you analyze material, whether you can present your thoughts in a clear and succinct manner, and essentially how you engage with new ideas and new materials, because there will be, why if you came to Oxford to study, there will be a lot of new material each week that you would have to examine and process. So what would you discuss in an interview? The format of the interview is almost like a chat and quite similar to a tutorial. So we sit around table or you know, in a room and we cover different types of material or problem solving or questions. So one thing that we might discuss is information provided in your literature, in your personal statement. For example, something you've read, you've said you've read, a book, or something you've seen, or experience you had relevant to the ancient world, let's say participating in a literary festival or visiting a museum or a site with your school or with your parents or creating something relevant to the ancient world. So we could explore it forever. Or you have written something and submitted it for us for assessment. So we might take points raised from the texts you have submitted from your written work and analyze them and discuss them further. So as a piece of advice, keep a copy of your personal statement. Be ready to discuss about the things you have stated in your personal statement, fieldwork, museum visits, podcasts, whatever it is that you have mentioned. Now, a lot of the interview will be taken up by discussing either text or a problem or sometimes an image like the one on your screen or a plan. And some of them, especially if there is a text, will be provided to you sometime before the interview about 20 minutes before the interview, half an hour. So you will be able to read it, think about it, and then come to the interview room with us to try to read it, to decode it, to understand what it is that it may be saying, and to see how this can form the basis for a discussion. Similarly, with an image, we don't usually choose something that we might be familiar to you, but rather we would like to see how you would describe it, how you might discuss it. And then for those of you who are doing linguistic, you might be discussing a specific text and the nuances or nuances of the text, the language, the character. So depending on what you have applied for, the format of the interview might vary slightly, but the key features will be the same. So we are not going to be there to check what you've done. We are interested to see what you can do. In order for preparation, the best thing to do is to come prepared and having read again your, literary, your personal statement and your submitted work and don't be surprised if you asked about them. If you have said you have read certain books and you've seen sites or you've visited, search about them, read them. It will because we might use them as a basis for conversation. Read about the course you have applied for. Be certain that you understand what it is that you are going to study. Not in all the details, of course, we don't expect this, but have a general idea that if you come to study, let's say, ancient modern history, what would you be taught? There is information in the websites of each of the universities you will be applying. And read around the topic that you like and write the aspects of the ancient world that you care. We are not there to trick you. We are not there to, you know, catch you. We are actually there to try to make you thrive and show you the best of yourself. So what we want to see is how you would react to problems, how you will solve problems. And think about experience that you would have had where, which are interesting and that you gain something from them. It could be a book that you read, a periodical, resources. Be ready to talk about them and explain to us what it is that you found fascinating and how this makes you want to continue working in the ancient world. But more importantly, just because you have prepared certain things, don't be thrown if you're not asked about those, but something else. We are there to look 
more than anything else how you would think, how you would solve problems, how interested you are. So during the interview, what you should do is listen carefully to the questions that we are asking you and take your time to answer. You don't have to blow up immediately. You can wait for a few seconds. If you don't understand the question, ask us to repeat it or to paraphrase it so that it's clear. It's not always straightforward what you're going to be seeing and we often try to show you something unfamiliar to most of you because we want everyone to start from the same basis. We don't want to privilege anyone. So if it's not obvious, it's because it isn't. It's not straightforward and it's unfamiliar. So explore the possible answers and guide us through your train of thought. And it doesn't matter if you make a mistake or if you change your mind. I mean, you don't learn if you don't explore and having your thought and then suddenly you thought, hmm, perhaps this doesn't work. No, I take it back. Let me start from scratch because let's say you're looking at the image on your screen, which is a view of the Athenian Acropolis from the Agora with a big shopping center in Agora, which is now the museum. If someone asks you, what do you think it is? You know, don't try to think what we is behind the question, just say, oh, I look at the view of a place that has a city. So start describing and then we will interact. We will have a conversation about it. That's what the interview is, either for a text or for an image or for an object. Now, if you are certain about something, it's better to make it clear to us so that we try to help. Don't try to stray and tell us and show off what you know. So if you have something about a question about something unfamiliar, don't go on discussing the essay you wrote about Augustus or about the Iliad or about Virgil. You want win points. What we want to see is that you're focused and you're willing to explore answers and solutions to unfamiliar material. So it's okay not to understand something. It's okay not to know what we would like you to do is discuss and engage with us. So be open and learn about the topic. You can get a lot of information about material, both about the interview process and about classics and about what we offer in the various strands of the degrees we do through our website. And we're always willing to answer questions. So please do get in touch either with me or uh, our outreach officer and as well contact the colleges because you will be applying to them and interviewed by them. As for classics, if you want to learn more, we are always welcome to follow us social media and see activities we do, things which would be of interest. And in any case, whatever you do, good luck and we're looking forward to seeing you in the future. Good luck with everything you do. Bye.